Hello, Beth Ingrills here, editor of Food Manufacturer, and we've got a really, really exciting day in store. It's my first time presenting at Business Leaders, but I'm really, really excited to discuss three very, very important topics around the cost conundrum, supply chain woes, and people and productivity. We've got a fantastic group of business leaders joining us, and I'm just so excited to hear what they have to say. And also, I've got to give a big thanks to Columbus as well for sponsoring. Well, I think the big, biggest opportunity in the food industry that's staring everybody in the face is actually there's a kind of Tesla-shaped hole sitting right at the heart of the business and that someone is going to fill it, um, by which the Tesla-shaped hole, in my view, is all around the health. I mean, health and nutrition is all about premiumization. The industry's crying out for premiumization and I think it's sitting there staring people in the face and um, for 2023, that's absolutely what we're focused on. You know, we've still got a lot of cost pressure, um, a lot of stuff coming through from the inflation side of things. Although headline inflation rates are coming down, there are still elements in our in our sector of uh, inflation still to come through, so that you know they, the, the two aren't going to fit perfectly together. So you know, that's our that's our biggest challenge. Now the opportunity. Is the, is, is the flip side of that, which is about productivity uh, and, and, and making sure we get the very best out of every uh, unit of input, whether that's money or whether that's a resource. And there are just so many opportunities out there to make businesses more efficient. We've talked about sustainability a lot this morning and, and that's something that I think is really, really important. And um, about four years ago, I was walking along the beach and I saw one of my sausage trays in the surf. And I thought, you know, we can do something about this. And we've shown that it's possible to supply fresh sausages to retailers and to wholesalers and not use plastic. To date, we've made some 16 million packs with zero defects, and we've shown the art of the possible. Yeah. And really, our opportunity for this year, we're now seeing engagement from the public on this. It's really, I think we're just about to catch a wave back to the old beach there um, and um, we're saying sales up 46% in H2 that's the second half of this year and next year we're looking at over 50% growth and so my challenge or opportunity as we like to say is, is to really how am I going to fulfill that demand and who are my new partners going yeah. to be in this exciting sustainable world that we're going into. Well, I think 2023 is going to be the year that the challenges recede, I hope, in terms of the challenges we've had in recent years, everything from Brexit to COVID to CO2, etc. Those sorts of things seem to be dissipating. So I think if we then take a step back and look at what are the secular issues that have always been there, um, productivity collapsed in this country after the financial crisis, that still hasn't been solved. Um, climate change, antimicrobial resistance, all of these issues remain the case. We've just been distracted on other um, matters since. And I think solving them is the big opportunity. We're very optimistic about the future. We're a cheese supplier. We, we produce 65%, uh, 70% of all the stilton that's sold worldwide. And we're really optimistic that we can actually really increase usage of stilton in the UK. So that, that's a big opportunity for us. And the way we've got to do that is breaking people out from using Snilton on the cheese boards and get them to use it in cooking. So rather than have mac and cheese with cheddar, uh, why not mac and cheese with Snilton, make it a bit more special, have it on your salad. Uh, so we're absolutely optimistic with that. And we're partnering with Marco Pair Y to try and help us do that through giving inspiration through uses. So the UK market, very optimistic. And then if we look further afield in terms of international, 20% of our business is export. And we think that we can double that over the next 10 years. So one of the things that we're seeing a lot of is more businesses are taking advantage of the tools that are there to join together the information, maybe use artificial intelligence over that data to provide a little bit more insight yeah. uh, and eventually get to a point where it's actually delivering actionable insights from that. 
Uh, so suggesting things, actions that we could actually take to mitigate a circumstance or to improve a, a sale or an area of uh, productivity, for example. Um, now, once we've got that, of course, we've got that information, we can also drive that into actions that might be resolved by things like a, a just a simple app on the shop floor, for example. Yeah. So you might want to collect data uh, and feed information back into that loop. So, okay, well, there's an action here that's been delivered, it's been fed, it's been completed, and, and bringing that data back as well. So really closing that whole loop. So uh, loads of good examples about where that, that can take place. So I, I think there's, there's two answers to that question. There's an immediate answer, and then there's a longer term answer. So the immediate answer, um, I think, right now is the cost of living crisis, I would say. Um, wider than that, it's the cost of production as well. So rising costs across the board, both for the business and for the consumer, and how we kind of tackle that and still deliver sustainable food. Longer term, it's the environment situation and climate change. And climate change is affecting us now too. Mm. But I think there's a sense in which there are, you know, we need to kind of juggle both of those things. So that's it, that's a wrap. Business Leaders 2023 is finished. Everyone's having their lunch very well earned, actually. We had some great discussion points from net zero to alternative suppliers to collaboration and cybercrime. There was some fantastic, fantastic input from everyone that attended. Thank you so much to them for all being so open and, and on, honest and discussing some really, really challenging topics and also illuminating some of the opportunities that we have for the food and drink sector. I cannot wait for next year when we do this all over again, um, but it's been an absolutely wonderful day and I think I deserve some lunch right now. <laughs>